right, so I am gonna be staking up tomatoes today. They are definitely at that point where I need to get a head start on getting them staked and ready to go so I don't find myself late July trekking through a giant tomato jungle trying to figure out what's going on. Since they're so close together, this will also help them with disease control and pest control because I will be able to see what's going on. I'm gonna trim any leaves below the fruit and make sure the leaves are not touching too much. I think I'm going to double up the stakes like this and then attach the stalk to those stakes just to help. I think last year I did just one stake and it was falling over by the end of the season. So this year I'm going to do two stakes and hope this works. I have these plastic clips. They're kind of like circles. I'm going to attach the stem to the stakes with these. All right, looking good. I am cutting off parts of the stem that are not holding tomatoes at all, no fruit, but are also just kind of suckers. And if they're below the first fruit, then I cut them off. You don't want to remove too much because you don't want to shock the plant. I would say like 10%, maybe 15% of the plant. I have no idea. Something like that. This Roma right here has so many tomatoes on it. I'm gonna try my best not to cut off any, any fruit bearing leaves. It also has so many stalks coming off of it. Like this whole one needs to go. I don't think that has any fruit. It does have some flowers, but it has to go. It's also already leaning so heavily. <laughs> Just have to be really careful not to knock any of the fruit off. Oh my goodness. This plant is just, it's already so beefy. I really need to prune it like pretty bad here. There we go, it's looking better. This looks like it's the main stalk. So I clipped it up at the very bottom and at the middle. So it will start going upwards instead of to the side. It's still pretty heavy. Just need to cut off more of these little suckers. This is what I did so far. All of the bottom of the tomatoes are pretty much pruned, except for a few I kind of left and I will probably prune off later. I ran out of my circular stem clip things, so I'm gonna have to order some of those online to complete the staking job. We have a 4th of July tomato blushing right there. I'm so excited. I think I'm gonna pick it today. You might think, why would I pick them when they're not ripe? I usually pick my tomatoes when they are just starting to blush. Otherwise, some other creature might get to it before me. I put them on the counter and I let them ripen until they're completely red, and then I freeze them for future sauce. I went to very quickly go over the new seeds that I got from True Leaf Market. I've never grown celery, but I decided to get some celery right here and I accidentally bought two of them, which is actually kind of annoying because I don't really like to eat celery. Yeah, I know I'm growing it because I want to freeze it and I want to use it for mirepoix, but other than that, I don't eat it on its own and I bought two packs, so really good stuff. I also got more Alaskan nasturtium right here. I got self-blanching cauliflower, which again, never grown cauliflower. I planted some already. I can't really remember where. They're out there somewhere. <laughs> I bought leeks. Also, I've never grown a leek. Planted them the other day. Let's see if we can get some leeks. Red komatsuna. The picture of it looked purple, so I think it's like a purple komatsuna. Very excited. Already planted that. I also got more daikon. This is called white cannon. Apparently, it is good for heat and cold. Excited to plant this one. And I got some sweet Thai basil. This is actually from Natural Grocers, not True Leaf Market. I'm excited to plant this as well for or the basil, but also the flowers. There are some daikon over here bolting. So I'm going to dig around in here and find the ones that have a flower beginning to form. And I'm going to go ahead and pull them. Oh my gosh. Wow. That one is so big.
I love that yesterday I was freezing so many greens to get them out of my refrigerator because they were taking up so much space. And here we are again today with greens going into the fridge in these giant containers. 32.7 grams on the collard greens, 48.1 grams on the kale dinosaur kale and I picked one dazzling blue and it is 5.2 grams. This is Komatsuna and it is 103.9. Rainbow chard, 97.3 grams. Snap peas, 14.5 grams. Daikon, 430.3 grams. Our one tomato, 36.7 grams. These are golden currants. I've been picking them for a few weeks now and freezing them. 16.6 grams. I believe I have just over a half pound of golden currants right now, so that's exciting. It looks like the season is coming to an end, so that might just be how much currants we get for the whole season. I'm excited to make a really small batch of jam with them. Okay. 32.9 grams of peas, fresh peas. These are how many peas we've harvested this year. Looking good. Definitely could have one meal with these, so I am happy about that. Hello, we are in my office slash bedroom. I just updated the spreadsheet here of all of the things that we just weighed. Can you believe it? We are at 9.99 pounds. <laughs> of food harvested this year. It is July 2nd. That is amazing. I'm so excited. We hit the five pound milestone on June 24th, which was my birthday. So exciting. And if I can harvest anything tomorrow, then we will hit the 10 pound milestone tomorrow, which is awesome. Last year, we hit the five pound milestone July 15th and we hit the 10 pound milestone July 31st. Wow. So we didn't even get five pounds until July, although I did have a little bit of a late garden last year and we didn't hit 10 pounds until the end of July, like the last day. That is really wild to me. So cool that it is the beginning of July and we're already there at 10 pounds. <laughs> Cannot wait to see how many we can get this year. Last year we grew 80 pounds of food, which was so cool, so exciting. And I updated some of the vegetables with the prices that I would find them for at just a typical grocery store. And we saved about $284.67 just on food that we grew at the garden last year and I had two four by eight feet plots. I would say that's really great, 80 pounds, $285 of savings just from those two little raised beds last year. And this year with our 10 by 20 and my balcony garden, I'm hoping for, uh, it'd be so cool if we could reach a hundred pounds of food. We'll see, <laughs> we'll see. But already nearly 10 pounds of food, beginning of July, so exciting. I did update this spreadsheet with the totals from the grocery store this year, just to account for any inflation or whatever is happening. And honestly, only two prices changed from last year. It was like spinach and the radishes went up like 10 cents and all the other vegetables were the same, which was kind of wild to me. I also don't really buy radishes or spinach at the grocery store, so it doesn't really affect me that much anyway. The total for this year so far is $24.66 that we have saved, I guess. That's what I'm going to say because <laughs> we don't have to buy it from the grocery store, so that's, that's pretty cool. And I'm also preserving everything, so we don't have to buy it in the future. Just wanted to update you on that and I will update you again maybe in a month and we'll see where we're at then. I am staking up these tomato plants. I bought the new clips. They look like this and this. I hope you can see that. They're really easy to use, way better than those other plastic ones. Oh yeah, I think that'll work probably for a little while. The stem might outgrow it or whatever, and I don't want to constrict the stem, but for now, I think that'll be good. It's looking like it'll stay put. Oh, I need one more stake for this one. This tomato has some rough spots on it and I don't really know why or what that's from. I've seen it on a few tomatoes. I feel like it actually could be flea beetles like that. They're all over my tomato plants. They're absolutely covered.
That beetle on that calendula is called a blister beetle and it is eating the petals of my calendula. <sighs> if you touch them, apparently they give you blisters. So <laughs> don't wanna touch it, but I also don't want it eating my flowers. The corn is getting so tall. Look how tall this is. Oh my gosh. I really hope I get a successful crop of corn this year. <sighs> wow. <gasps> Oh, this one is forming something. Maybe the silks or the pollen things. I need to look up corn. I'm a little confused about how it works. I think I know the, the basis of it. Also, there are so many ladybugs in here. Love that. I'm gonna harvest some daikon right now. Sorry if the camera is crooked. You are sitting in a pile of dirt. Okay, that's not a daikon. I'm simply looking for a little flower bulb on top that looks like it's about to bolt. And then I pull it. A little baby one, okay. A lot of the daikon is yellowing, so I'm like, I'm not sure if I should pull it. I think the stems are just really sensitive. They break really easily, and I've been digging around so much that I'm just destroying all of them. Gosh, I think that might be the only daikon. I thought there was going to be way more. All right, one daikon. The cabbage is looking amazing, except for the grasshoppers that are absolutely destroying it. I'm going to spread diatomaceous earth all over it, and then I think I'm going to cover it with a little bit of netting later. So I think I'm going to just dump this diatomaceous earth all over this cabbage just by hand. <laughs> There's so many grasshoppers, and I am just pouring this all over them. Sorry, little grasshoppers, but I just want to have a successful cabbage. Oh my god, my phone. <laughs> Oh God, I got it all over the violas. They're also eating the violas though, so maybe, maybe that's necessary. We just got back from the garden and of course I ordered Next Level Burger, which is a plant-based like fast food restaurant in Denver. It's like one of my favorite things to get after gardening because well, I need the calories and it's just delicious. I already had a cookies and cream shake <laughs> completely gone on the way home. And this right here is a Redwood truffle burger. It is a shiitake mushroom and white truffle patty topped with smoked Gouda cheese, sauteed herbed mushrooms and house-made forest sauce, which I don't really know what that is, and a whole wheat bun, and it has lettuce and tomato. It's 530 calories, not bad, I think. And then I have the onion rings, which are so delicious, and blue cheese dip for them. Oh my gosh. Mm. Again, everything is plant-based, so the blue cheese sauce, the gouda, everything. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Mm. Mm -hmm. I believe this is like a limited time only burger benefiting the national parks or something like that. So that's why it's called the Redwood Truffle Burger. You can definitely taste the truffle, which is so great. I love that. Mm. I think the forest sauce is like a green goddess sauce. So that would make the most sense. Not a fan of hot lettuce. 